VLC Media Player, also uncommonly known as Videoline Client, the more you know, is an application that most people download on their PC, yet most people open their file, play something, and then close it, with no idea of all the other features. So in this video, I'll cover various tips, tricks, and other little easter eggs that you'll actually use, as opposed to a load of gimmicks. So with that, let's begin. Chapters below by the way. Number 1. Playback Speed Right, so let's start with playing content controls. If you need to speed up your playback, then press the left and right square bracket keys. This will slowly increase your playback speed by 0.1x each time and likewise if you decide to play back something slower not sure what the exact limit is but yeah you can get pretty crazy with the playback speed even going as high as around 31.25x speed which is what i was able to cap out at though if you want some standard playback controls then by pressing the plus and minus keys you can slow down your recording to half speed quarter speed a third speed etc etc you'll also find some additional controls present in the playback menu as well number two scrubbing quickly so everyone knows that pressing the space bar will allow you to start and stop the playback but did you know that that by pressing the left and right arrow keys this will cause you to jump backwards and forwards 10 seconds respectively and if you hold down shift when pressing the arrow keys you can instead move backwards and forwards by three seconds and if that still doesn't float your boat then hold down the control key to jump back and forwards by one whole minute each time you press those arrows oh and last one i promise if you press control and all together with an arrow key you can jump in large five minute intervals in either direction so yeah pretty useful set of combinations here's a table to break it down if you're interested number three volume controls now the last thing you want to be doing is blasting some video or music playback at 200% volume. Well, to prevent this, be sure to hit the M key in order to mute the VLC application. Though, if you do need to turn the VLC application volume up or down, then be sure to use the up and down arrow keys to move in increments. Or you can just use your mouse wheel while hovering over the little indicator that you see in the bottom left hand corner. But I mean, who does that? Number 4. Viewing Options So you'll probably know that you can go into full screen mode by pressing the F key or by pressing this button here. However, if you want to always go into full screen whenever you open a file then be sure to go to tools preferences and then to the video tab and select this option and on a similar note if you're viewing your content on a slightly different aspect ratio screen then by pressing the c button you can change the cropping and the aspect ratio of your content this will cause vlc to cycle through some common aspect ratios whether that be 16 by 9 4 by 3 square or even various cinema style aspect ratios by the way i'll discuss various vlc settings that you should change at the end of the video so be sure to stick around for those number five capture frame ability so if you want to take a snapshot of what you're watching in VLC, then don't bother taking a screenshot of the video player. Instead, just right click anywhere in the VLC player, go to video, and then press take snapshot. The snapshot will then be taken, and the location where it's saved is briefly shown to you as well. Though, if you want to change its location, go to tools, preferences, video, and then click change directory. Alright, so we're halfway into this video now. So here are a bunch of little tips and easter eggs that I'll throw in here, as it wasn't an easy way to categorize these. So first up, if you want to see how long is left for a particular clip, then go to the very right side of the playback bar and click the time. By clicking on it, a minus sign will appear and thus will tell you how long is left for the playback of that clip. Now let's say you're watching a movie and want to see some subtitles. Well, to do this, be sure to go to this menu. If there are some subtitles available, then you'll see them here. You can also do the same thing by pressing the shift and then the V key, which will cycle between the available subtitles each time you press the combo. Talking about movies, if there's a particular part of it that you want to capture, let's say, and set as your desktop wallpaper because you found a cool shot, for example, then pause at that point and go to the video tab where you'll have an option to set the frame as your wallpaper. Honestly, this is a pretty cool feature that you wouldn't expect to be built in, and it's so easy to use, but it's also just as easy to miss. Oh, and regarding subtitles, to make your subtitles larger, hold the control key and then scroll with your mouse wheel. But what's also pretty handy is right clicking anywhere in the viewer, pressing view, and then clicking always on top. This will keep the VLC application window in the foreground, even if you have other applications open and active. This is similar to the Power Toys tweak I covered not too long ago, so I'll leave a video on that above if you're interested. Anyway, if you're a keyboard shortcut connoisseur, then you can also enable the minimal interface option in this menu as well, as well as by pressing the control and H key, which will hide away all the menus and controls, leaving you at the mercy of keyboard shortcuts. But if there's one keyboard shortcut you should know, it's a fact that you can simply press the S key to make the VLC player go black and stop playing whatever spiciness was on screen. Now that's a lot of controls, so if you want to have quick access to some of these, then be sure to go to the tools tab in the menu bar and then click customize interface. From here, you can then add and remove controls as you like. All right, let's get back to the main video now. Number six compress and convert. So I'm sure you're realizing by now that VLC does more than just play media. I mean, if you want to convert a particular media file, let's say, then be sure to go to the media tab and press the convert and save option, which as you can see, you can also do by pressing the control and R key. From here, a dialog box will pop up, allowing you to add a file. Once a file has been selected, you can then press convert and save, and then another menu will pop up, allowing you to select the file format that you want to convert to, as well as where you want to save that file. After hitting start, VLC will just churn through the file you provided and will produce 
produce a converted copy of the file at the location you specified. Number 7. Effects and Equalizers Alright, so if you're an audio file or just want to add some effects to your media playback, then be sure to go to the Tools menu up above and press the Effects and Filters option, which you can also do with the Ctrl E shortcut. From here, a mini equalizer menu will pop up, allowing you to add various effects to your audio. This ranges from modifications in the EQ and compression, as well as being able to apply colour adjustments and even adding a watermark for example. Number 8. Capturing your video, screen or webcam What you might not know is that VLC can actually record your screen, webcam and can even take a snapshot of what you're watching. Yeah, you might want to pay attention here. So we covered taking a snapshot of your screen previously, but now let's cover recording your screen. To do this, go to the media tab in the top right, then select the open capture device drop down menu. From here, you can then select the capture mode, so I'll select desktop for now. Then you'll be given an option to choose the frame rate you want to record at. So again, I'll select 60 FPS here. Following on from that, what you want to do is press this small drop down next to the play button and press convert. Another pop up menu will appear and in here you'll be able to select the output format type as well as where you want to save that screen recording. After that, just press start and your desktop will start to be recorded. You know your screen is being recorded by VLC due to the timer in the bottom left that counts how long it's been since the recording started. At this point, you can now leave VLC running in the background and when you're done recording your screen, simply press the stop button and the file will be saved to where you've specified. Now to record your webcam, you do the exact same steps as mentioned previously by going to media, open capture device, but this time select direct show for the top box, your webcam for the second and a microphone of your choosing in the third. The rest of the steps are all the same. Oh and finally, if you just want to capture what you're playing in the VLC media player, then simply go to the view tab in the menu bar and press the advanced controls option. After you do this, you'll notice some additional controls appear in the bottom left hand corner of the player. At this point, recording whatever you're watching is as easy as pressing the red record icon to start the recording and then press it again to stop the recording. You can also press the square stop button to do the same thing. Once stopped, the recording will be saved in your Windows video folder by default. And if you want some more granular control of the settings that VLC uses for this capture, then you can do that by going through the menus in the media tab and the open capture device option that we spoke about already. Number 9. Bookmarking stuff. You can do this by going to the playback tab in the menu bar and then going to custom bookmarks and then finally to the manage option which can also be done with the control B shortcut. From the pop-up menu you can then create a bookmark at the point where you are in the video. Once created if you are at any other point in the video you can simply press the control B key to get at all the bookmarks you might have created. Though if you close VLC all the bookmarks will be gone so in order to save these which seems pretty logical you'll need to create a tiny playlist file for VLC to use in the future. To do this go to media save playlist to file and then press save the file. Feel free to change the name as you please. Once saved you'll notice that it's an absolutely tiny file but when you want to play the media and have access to the bookmarks again just open the file rather than the actual media file as this instructs VLC to open the original media file with the bookmarks loaded. Number 10 VLC settings. All right and just to round off the video here's a quick file list of various settings that you should consider changing. Multiple instances. Untick this option here to allow you to open multiple file explorer media files in different VLC windows. Not sure why this is not set as the default option in the first place but now you know. Pause on last frame of the video. As the name suggests you can pause on the last frame of the video with this option rather than stopping the video and having to press the play button again to get the video playback bar. Show system tray icon. I prefer to have this off as I don't need yet another icon filling up the system tray when some basic stop start and playback controls are available in the windows preview. Continue playback where you left off. Some of you might prefer this option to always start the playback of a particular file to where you left off. This might be pretty handy if you have multiple movies on the go. Change your full screen monitor device. This setting might be pretty useful for those of you with multiple monitors of various qualities and sizes, allowing you to choose full screen playback to always occur on a particular screen for example. Default screenshot format. Another setting you should change is regarding the fact that the snapshots you take within VLC are PNG by default. If you want to change this then you can go in here as well as change your location where the files are stored when a screenshot is taken. Subtitle customization. In the subtitles tab of the settings you can change the font, size and other attributes of the subtitles within VLC. Not sure how much use this might be but if you want to get into the mood of a horror film let's say with some matching subtitle aesthetics then I guess that's an option too. Inputs and codecs. In the inputs and codecs area of the settings you can change the location of where video recording is stored if you like as well as a bunch of other more complex things that most people won't need to change. And finally in the hotkey section you can change various keyboard shortcuts and key bindings if you like. Pretty self-explanatory really. But I mean if that's all too simple for you then you can always dive into the advanced settings if you'd like which I think I'll leave be for the sake of this video. But those are just VLC settings. It's Windows settings that will really make a big difference to your computer usage. So click here for your ultimate guide to Windows 11 settings that will actually make a difference. Or click here if you want to learn about some more super useful Windows apps you need to have installed.
anyway, like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.